we've lived in so many different places and I think that it's time that we sit down and have a good discussion about which were the best places, how we could have maybe mitigated some of the experiences and not necessarily had to hit so many walls. So I'm just gonna talk about some of those places. But for those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Cameron. I have a family of four, so it's me, my partner, Becca, and our two kids, Julian and Nina. Uh, right now, I'm at the English Library in Central. I uh, come down here sometimes. They have a really good book selection, really great place to come if you want to either, you know, just meet up or just have some quiet time. But let's get right into it. So we started in Bali. Bali was our first place of travel, and it's where we made the most mistakes. Uh, we blew through like $12,000 in the course of two months or something ridiculous, maybe even maybe even more. I think we were we blew through the money and then we got even farther in debt because we thought, oh, we're gonna travel the world with $12,000 and that's gonna be fine. Um, and then we'll figure it out by then. But we had different spending styles at the time. And I'm always, I'm a big advocate of making mistakes and uh, giving grace. So Becca was still in the habit of like spending, like we had our two jobs and you know we're making a decent amount. But we, we shouldn't have been more um, focused on budgeting, but we weren't at the time. So by the time we were in debt, it was kind of too late. Like uh, it was one time we were out and she had the card and I was like, hey, what credit card is that? And she was like, oh, it's the card I've been using the whole time. And I was like, what account is that attached to? <laughs> and then, yeah, it was just like crash and burn. But also a big reason why we spent the, mo the most money in Bali is because we didn't understand how things worked as far as um, buying things that don't have price tags. Uh, how do you find housing? Uh, should you be saying yes on the first time how to negotiate? We couldn't say no to anybody. I mean, people would offer you something and we were like, oh yeah, it's Bali, what's this, whatever. So Bali is a very nice place as far as if you want that picturesque, like kind of that look, you want that aesthetic, Bali is it, 100%. Now, if you're trying to raise a family and you're trying to um, experience like more locals and, and not really uh, get the tourist experience then Bali's not it but as far as beauty just beauty Bali was beautiful but at the same time another thing that was kind of a, a down not necessarily and it was kind of a negative for Bali is Bali has a lot of poverty and I can't ignore it I'm not one of those people who can be like oh you know we're in the beach we're in the, we're in the mountains and it looks great like I noticed that our neighbor is living in a wallless hut and there are dogs like He's living with like flea ridden dogs. And so that really bothered me. So Bali is, has extremes of poverty and wealth. Like the guy who was living next to us was like this Australian guy. He had like maids, he had like all kind of stuff. I mean, he was just, just rich guy. And I was like, but right down the street, this guy has no money. So Bali wasn't really it for us. Um, and it, because of the whole tourism thing, there's a lot of scams. Uh, so we, we got scammed several times. We're paying way too much for the house. I mean, there was mosquitoes. Everywhere. It was bad. Uh, but if you want that aesthetic, Bali is it. Next, we were in Thailand. Uh, so we went to Bangkok and went to Chiang Mai. I wish we would have went straight to Chiang Mai, but we stayed in Bangkok for like a week. We, we saw the malls. It's a busy city. It's not one of those cities where you can see it in a week. It's not one of those cities where you can probably see it in a month. You need time. And um, I didn't like Bangkok. I'm not personally a city guy, but we have friends who swear by, you know, Bangkok and Thailand. But Chiang Mai was like another experience we had, which was you still get a little bit of city, but you get like you're closer to the ground, you know, and bought to the dollar was really good. But it was it wasn't as good as some of the places that we were going to experience. So it was good, but we could have got a lot more bang for our buck in Vietnam. But we'll talk about that. Now, as far as Thailand goes, people were super nice. I mean, it was the nicest. It's considered, I think, Chiang Mai has the nicest people in the world. Um, and a lot of people say it's fake because of the money. Like, you know, if you, if you have money, then they'll treat you nice. But I had wonderful experiences with people that I didn't pay anything to. And uh, I felt like it was a very, it wasn't like the most aesthetically pleasing city, but it had you know temples that you could go see and there was like a temple on the mountain and our apartment was really nice i think we were paying about eight hundred dollars for that apartment but in bali we were paying like two grand for a house it was like a three-bedroom house it wasn't that good it had a pool balcony but it wasn't that good 
Um, but we paid like 800 for a one bedroom in Thailand right next to the mall. So we never had transportation costs. Uh, and we started to get a little bit smarter as far as our spending with money. We weren't eating out as much, but they did have some good food. And that's one thing I will say in Bali, the food all kind of had like a similar flavor. It was almost like this underlying like taste. I don't know if you've been to Bali, I'm pretty sure you understand what I mean. But Thailand was different and they had like, I mean, the food was amazing. We were not paying that much for food. It was more expensive for us to go to the grocery store than it was for us to just eat out basically every day. But it was a specific place that we had to go. Like we had to go to the top and bottom of the mall. Those were like our staples. And we would get meals for like 50 cent? Is it 50 cent? No, 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 no. Because it, it was like small meals. So you get maybe like $2. It was like you get like a bowl. You get like $2 a bowl. You get another one. You get another one. So you can get like three meals and be like six bucks. And it's all different stuff. And man, we were eating. We were eating. I puffed up out in Thailand actually. But cost of living wasn't bad. Uh, the people were great. And as far as activities, we were we were very like closed off. But I remember going to the mall, and anytime I went, there were like events going on, and we could have definitely tapped in with the community. And we were we were meeting people as well who were saying like, oh, you have to get out to the islands. So there is a lot you can do in Thailand as far as uh, travel. I highly recommend Thailand as even a first place just to go. Asia in general is wonderful. Then next we were in Vietnam. And that was when everything was, it clicked. You know, it's like, this is what we want to do. This is the lifestyle we want to have. We're not going back. Uh, the people in Vietnam were, it's where we made the most friends. And it's where we even had to learn a little bit of Vietnamese. And that's something I recommend is when you go to a place, immediately try to learn the language, you know, off jump, get hello, goodbye, um, thank you. Just get, the, just get some phrases and start. Because I'm telling you, by the end of that process, or if you leave that country, you're like, damn it, I wish I would have just learned the language. So 100% tell you to uh, start learning the language as soon as you touch down. I made a lot of Vietnamese friends. Like, they're, they're some of the nicest people. I cannot tell you how much. Uh, shout out to Long. I miss you, man. I miss you. Uh, and they love kids. So we had Nina, and she was puffy at the time. I'm talking about puffy. We didn't see it. And people just loved her. They loved, you know, they would come up, they would kiss her feet. They would, um, they would try to, like, pick her up. And we even had someone try to pick, pick her up and walk away. But let's talk a little bit about the cost of living. So it was really good cost of living there. We had, um, we didn't look around at first. So we were paying a little bit more, but it was the best room we've ever had. We were on the 23rd floor of one of the newest buildings. And I think it was about, I want to say 800 for a room. Maybe a little bit more, or was it? Yeah, 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 I think it was like 800 for our room, but we had the best view in the city. Literally, if you weren't living on top of the mountain, we had the best view in the city. It was amazing. And there was a basketball court next to our house. So I would just go down there, it was like constantly meeting people, playing basketball like every day, it was good. That's where I like got in shape. Vietnam, and, and most of the people too in Vietnam are in shape. So you kind of just like, acclimate to that like you're eating healthier you know you're eating like greens with every meal you're eating soups all the time so like Vietnam has a very healthy culture and like I said it would probably have been the first place we would have went if we knew and I highly recommend Vietnam as a first stop as well uh, but the thing about Vietnam is it wasn't the most family friendly place like it was it wasn't the least but it was just like we were kind of our own family we had like one or two families that we like clicked with which was good but we wanted more family interaction and we kind of got that when we were in the UK but it was super expensive so after Vietnam uh, it was during COVID so we kind of left because of that like uh, there was a situation where Vietnam was the best place in the world for COVID. We literally had no cases for a year. Now, I think this is why things got so bad so fast. So for a whole year, I'm talking about we're on the beach. Our friends are like, it's getting bad. We're like, huh? It's COVID. It's not that bad. Because Vietnam shut the borders immediately after um, they heard they caught wind. So three months before everyone was thinking COVID is even a thing, Vietnam shut the borders. They shut school down. They shut everything down. 
And then three months later, they were like, COVID, they shut, they shut the borders. And they were like, nobody's leaving, nobody's coming out, that's it. And that's when everybody else had first started thinking, should we do something? And then I remember, um, I remember the one, there was one case in Vietnam, it was a foreigner, and they saved his life and they were like spreading it. They were like, we saved his life and they pushed him out the country and they were like, we're not having COVID. So for a year, we didn't have any cases. The most we got to was like three cases in the city and they would do lockdowns every time we had a case. Uh, so it was, it was controlled, but then when it finally got out, it was, they got out in Saigon. I think they said that people were sneaking foreigners into the country because you could make a lot of money doing it. Um, the numbers just went up. It just went crazy. And uh, the Vietnamese government just like shut it all down. They were like foreigners, vaccine mandates. Like we were rationing food. You get a little bag of rations, you get like a little squash and some rice. And I was like, eh, we might have to go. So we escaped Vietnam in an ambulance, escaped. We paid a guy, he had an ambulance, he zoomed us out the city, dropped us off at the edge of it. There was another guy waiting. He zoomed us up to the airport, it was like a straight, like, but you couldn't stop. So he had all the papers to get through all the checkpoints. It was a crazy experience, but I would go back to Vietnam. That did not taint my view of the country. The visa situation wasn't good at the time, and I think it still isn't now, but I would 100% recommend Vietnam. After that, we went to Ireland. And from and so Ireland wasn't really going to be a place we thought of living, but I highly recommend visiting Ireland. Super beautiful. Uh, people were, you know, mildly friendly. We knew people there. And um, so we kind of like we didn't have to start integrating. We had a friend who was from there and he showed us around his friends group. So we already were like, welcome. And that was wonderful. Got a Guinness, you know, in Ireland. And it was the first time I saw the stars. So we got an Airbnb out in the country. And uh, it was later at night, and I was like, man, I want to go outside. It's kind of, it feels nice. And we look up, and I swear it's the first time I saw the night sky in my life. It was just like, it was extremely, uh, I, it was breathtaking. It was just eye-opening. And um, the cost of living as far as in Ireland wasn't too bad, but I think the housing situation in Dublin, because we were in Cork, Dublin, and Belfast, and we rented a car for like 600 bucks, and drove the like basically around the country in a few days but it's so beautiful if you want pictures if you want something that looks good ireland looks good and it will you need to have a good job and the people are friendly people leave you alone out there too that's another thing about ireland when we got there my friend was like um people it's just suggestions like most things are just suggestions nobody's really gonna like bother you and I, I felt, it's strange, man. I love Irish people. I loved, like, I loved Ireland, 100%. Go there again. I would live there, guaranteed. Guaranteed could live there and die there. Yeah. A lot of people don't like it because it rains. Like, you know, it's, uh, the weather is, one minute it's extremely beautiful, the next minute it's, like, raining. But I kind of like that. Um, the next place we went to was the UK. So we just hopped over to the UK after that. And supposedly, I didn't realize I had more family in the UK than I do in the US. It was, my, I asked my dad, and he was like, yeah, yeah, you need to go to the UK. And I was like, who do I know over there? And he was like, yeah, you got some cousins. Come to find out, I have eight aunts from my grand, my grandpa had eight sisters. So I had like cousins upon cousins upon cousins, and I'm the American cousin, so they just treated me like, it was great. I love it. I love the UK. Uh, cost effective? No. Would I live there friendly? No. But as far as um, meeting people when we were in London, I mean, like, I, we, we would go to the park. We went to, uh, I think it was like Princess Diana Park, and we met so many different families who were like, yeah, come to this birthday, come over, do this. It's like they wanted to meet us, and there were just so many kids. So that was like when we realized, okay, the appeal of this place is the family. And the cool thing about the UK, too, is I like the culture. Um, I do like the pub culture, and I like that, you know, you can go to Manchester, and it's different than Birmingham, and then it's also different from Leeds. And then, like, our friend gave us, like, the tour, the breakdown of all the different accents, and it seems like they have a culture that permeates the whole um, UK. And I think there's definitely, like, some outliers, but for the most part, it felt pretty connected, and I like that. I like that. 
but definitely not a place that we stay. We we stayed there for a little bit and then we hopped back to the U.S. to kind of see family, re reassimilate some of the American goals or whatever it is, and then we jumped jump down to Mexico. Now, Mexico was great. Um, no, matter of fact, I skipped the place. In the middle of us going to Asia, we hopped into to Canada and we were living in Canada for a little bit. So hold hold up, no Mexico yet. Canada. We were in Toronto and we were in Van we were in um, Montreal. Cost effective, not so much. Better than living in the U.S., but you you do kind of need to learn French if you're going to live in Montreal. Toronto felt great. And another thing, like Canada has some of the safest cities in North America. Merida is considered one of the safest cities in North America, but the next in line and the one in front are all in Canada. So Canada is a really safe place to go. Um, it taught me a lot in Canada about like people and they're friendly, 100%. As far as Can Canadians go, I've had like one bad experience, but for the most part, Canadians have been some of the most friendly people I've met in all corners of the world. Like if I meet a Canadian in, in Asia, solid. If I meet a Canadian in, in Mexico, it's usually like solid. So Canadians, y'all have like the, the like a chokehold when it comes to like friendliness and being like hospitable. So Canada is actually a place that we thought about going uh, to kind of get that same monetary value that the U.S. gives without... Um, without losing the power of our dollar and then building, like getting jobs in Canada and then using that as a springboard for other places. So that is still on the list. I like Canada. I think that it's close enough to us where we can visit our family, but far enough to where we feel like we're not, this ain't, you know, the US. And, um, you know, from Canadians, I do hear that it's becoming more and more like the US. But also, I think it's from their original Canadian perspective, because I've met like a few Canadians and they're like, yeah, it's not as bad as the U.S., but we don't like it. So it's like you're already at a better point when it comes to just having a more homogenous culture. Like Canadians have like the Canadian things that Canadians do. Americans, there's not really anything like what we eat burgers. But for the most part, we don't like, you know, there's always different types of people in, in the U.S. And it, they, we stay separate for the most part, unless you're on the West Coast. But I'll say this. So with Canada, the cost of living was about the same in the U.S. The people were extremely friendly. Uh, Montreal wasn't really a family city. We didn't feel and Toronto wasn't really a family city, but we didn't do a lot of exploring in Toronto. But I hear great things about it as far as a city. Um, so that is one thing I will say is we need to explore a little bit more of Toronto. Uh, but what I did, I liked it. Now I would use that as a, I wouldn't use it as a place to travel. I would use it as a place to build Mexico. So we're here. This is where we are. This is one of the best experiences that we've had as travelers. We feel, I feel like we're more mature. You know, we know kind of learn the language. We know, um, we want family, we want friends, we know how to kind of feel things out. Um, we've gone through so many different trial and error situations when it comes to like our, our relationship, our relationship with, with travel, with money. We've grown so much. Mexico is like also taught us a lot of things because to, for the most part, homogenous culture, you know, but it's different. It's kind of like how the UK is, like where there's different accents, there's different cultures within the entire context of things. But then it's beautiful because like in Vietnam, if you try to learn language, people won't really help you. And it's not because they're being unfriendly. It's because they just expect you as a foreigner to speak English. So they don't think you're trying to learn it. But in Mexico, anytime I go out and I'm saying, I ask someone, um, can I speak Spanish with you? Can you help me practice? Every single time it's been like really good uh, experience. So people are, are very friendly when it comes to that and trying to like integrate within the culture and understand I've had no issues there. Cost of living has been good. It's getting higher in Merida, but I'm pretty sure if we lived in other places in Mexico, we would have like a better cost of living. Also, it's very hot here. So that kind of, you know, that's kind of one of those things that's weighed. Like I said, super family city. There's always things for us to do with our kids. There's always another family who has a birthday party, like even to the extent that we're invited to birthday parties for families that we don't even know. 
and it's just like I think there's like a, a cost thing where if a certain amount of kids come to a party then the cost stays like at a certain point but if they don't then they have to charge more so it kind of benefits more kids to be in these different settings um, I like that our child is learning Spanish which is a very common language among, uh, around the world you know we can do jujitsu here for a fraction like a third of the cost in the US it's a little bit a little bit more than a third of the cost in the US so she can be in jujitsu she can be and we can go down to the English library and we can find like resources here and it's great now I wish the cost of living was a little bit better but for what we get and the friends that we have and how things work and the safety which you cannot take for granted safety is huge but for the most part around the world as a as a tourist like people want to keep tourists safe and as long as you're not involved in like drugs or like doing anything that you probably shouldn't have been doing in the first place you're relatively safe most people like leave you alone when it comes to stuff like that but uh it's been good it's been good merida is a great place as far as activities cost of living and um if you need help also we do again let me segue into our consultation service if you need help if you're thinking about coming to merida reach out we can help you um to find a place or to you know just discuss like if merida is even the right place for you uh just let us know and we can discuss that also leave questions on any topics that you want me to go over i think on the next video i'm going to start going over the questions that our uh, viewers have and just making videos specifically answering those questions but i think that's it for the most part just to recap, Vietnam, go. Thailand, go. Bali, think about it. Ireland, go if you have a decent amount of money. The UK, got to have the money. But also, you know, I wouldn't say it's like a travel place. Like if you're trying to go shopping or you're trying to, I don't know. The UK is not really one of those tourist destinations. Um, and also for building a family. Um, Merida. Definitely top of the list up there as well. Uh, if you want to still stay close to the U.S. and still kind of have like a little bit of the overlap in that culture, Merida is it. But then there's still other places that I have not mentioned. So if you see other channels where people talk about like Cambodia or people are talking about um, Mongolia, that's one of the places we're going to go. And also we're still like Africa is going to be. Like, I'm going to settle down. When Nina gets, like, 12, I want us to just go to Africa and just, like, go. Just stay there for, like, years. Because there's just, it's, it's a continent, you know. You cannot think that you're going to experience an entire country in a week. You're not going to do it. So this is what I want. I want, I want my children to experience all there is in these things, or at least get the most part. So when people try to tell them about these places, which, you, you know, you hear in the U.S., Oh, they don't go to there. It's safe, unsafe. It's safer than where I was living. So it's like that's what I'm saying as far as um, what I want to do and what our plans are. So keep watching. Let us know if you want to do it. You can do it as well. 100% guarantee you can. Uh, if you need help with anything, uh, just let me know. Reach out. And you have a nice day.